Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to The Lucky Needle. I know it's been a little while since the last video that I filmed. I've been trying to get back to working on building this shop and updating you guys on the process, but uh, we ran into some urgent projects on the house that needed to get done. You know, we got tired of taking all the dogs out every hour, two hours, so, and how much time that was taken, so I built the fence in the backyard. our roof started leaking during one of the storms so then I had to deal with that yeah so after I got all those things sorted out I started working on researching and pricing out shops and what I was going to be able to uh, afford and have made and to be honest I got a little frustrated and I got a little bit angry at the prices of things so basically what happened was four years ago when I originally had started to think about moving out here and relocating the Lucky Needle so that I could get a big shop, uh, the prices were two to three times less than what they are now. So some of these quotes that I was getting back just really blew me away because it was nothing like what I expected. Um, I know in that last video, you guys, I said that uh, I was planning on building a 3,000 square foot shop. Um, well, that's definitely out of my reach now. It's, that's what I was hoping on getting, you know, when I had originally priced this move and relocation out. But uh, something like that is going to, these days, is going to cost me far north of $100,000. And that's just not in my budget currently. So um, I had to reevaluate the size of the building and, and uh, actually I had to learn a lot about the different options there are. So today I wanna just talk to you guys a little bit about what I've learned about buildings and shops and bringing you guys along this process so that hopefully if you guys decide to do this one day, you won't feel as lost as I have felt during this process trying to figure out everything because there's a lot to, to know about so um, but basically what I did was uh, I sat down and I really tried to decide exactly how much space I could do what I needed to do it with and basically I decided what I wanted like the two main things it's just gonna be an upholstery shop uh, before I was hoping to, you know, have a wood shop, a machine shop, a welding shop, kind of all in one building, but that's just not the priority right now. Right now, the priority is the Lucky Needle. So that's what I'm focusing on, and that's what I decided to build this shop specifically just for those purposes. And the two major things that I wanted to make sure that I would be able to do inside that shop is to be able to fit a large boat and a car at the same time while still being able to work inside the shop and have all of my equipment. Um, so what I did was I was originally considering a 24 by 40 foot building. Um, and you can see here, basically what I did is I plotted this out on some graph paper so that it's all to scale. Um, and there's, this is definitely a very basic way of doing this. I, you could totally do this on a CAD software, probably way easier. I just didn't feel like taking the time to figure out how to do that. Um, so basically what I did was I just cut out all these little squares, roughly the size of things that I would need in my shop, you know, cause I want, I want to have room in the shop for an eight by eight sewing table. And I also want it to be able to split in half so I can make it, uh, four by 16 if I need. Um, so that's a big table in there that I need. Um, you know, I have my toolbox, my sewing machines. Um, and then I also wanted this uh, fabrication table. So basically that's for um, when you're doing jobs that you don't want to destroy your layout table on because your layout table needs to stay clean and in really good shape. So this will be, you know, for 
for tearing apart seats and uh, and and uh, you know spraying glue and all kinds of stuff like that. You know, a table that you don't really care as much about if you get beat up. So um, I realized quickly realized that uh, this 24 by 40 was going to be too small to realistically be able to comfortably work inside there. Um, especially because if you had a truck and a boat in at the same time, there's going to be only a couple feet between the walls and the boat to get in between. So it would be really difficult to get materials in through there. Um, and also that leaves no room for, on the walls to hang things or do anything like that. So um, I ended up deciding on a... 30 by 40 um, and you can see there's it's it's quite a bit more room so this is a 1200 square foot shop where this is somewhere around 900 and I believe that that extra square footage is really going to make a difference because you can see how much more room I have when I have all my equipment and everything in here there'll be you know roughly four foot from the walls and then you'll have probably eight foot in between if I have a boat and a truck or a or a car or whatever in there so that's how I decided um, the smallest size that I could actually use it was really helpful for me to visualize it because I also tried things like um, I laid out stakes in the yard that were gonna be the size shop that I was hoping to build and it was just really hard for me to visualize if it was big enough because honestly nothing seemed big enough uh, when I did it that way. So doing it on this graph paper really put it into perspective for me. I was able to confidently decide that this is the size shop that will work for me. Um, and you know, that was, that was a hard, hard process because this is a lot of money that I'm going to be spending and investing on this shop. It's probably the, one of the bigger purchases that I've ever, ever made. So I really can't uh, afford to mess this up. Uh, so, cause once it's built, it's built. There's no returning the building. Once I figured that out, I started to um, research the different types of buildings that are available and I came to realize through talking with friends and talking friends who have had shops built talking to some of the people on the lucky needle community that have had shops built on their property and I really appreciated a lot of their advice and advice from friends who had done this before um, so I quickly realized that there was a a lot of different options to choose from and I needed to figure out what the most reasonable solution for me would be. And also living here in the South, it's important to for these buildings to be strong and structurally engineered because of the hurricanes. So that is also a concerning factor that may have increased the price of the building that I chose compared to maybe somewhere else in the country. Um, so let's just talk about the four different types of buildings that are really your main options for having a shop like this built. So the first one's going to be what's called a pole barn. And essentially that's a wooden frame. It's got, I believe, eight by eight posts that are in the ground. Um, it can be a dirt floor, which that doesn't work for what we're doing. You can also have a concrete floor. Then they're just sided with, uh, with metal siding, just the same like a, uh, like a steel building would be. It's just the interior structure is mostly wood. Some of them have like a metal trusses that are up there. But um, the reason I didn't, I chose not to go with one of those was because uh, they're in my area, they're more expensive to insure because they don't have necessarily as high of a wind speed rating from now. Now don't take any of this as these are facts. This is just what I've learned and what I think to be true. Uh, so it was between the insurance and the fact that it was really not that much of a price difference for a steel building. So I decided not to go down that road. Um, so then the other type, there's two, there's three types of steel buildings that you can purchase. Um, the type 
There's a, a build-it-yourself type, which is called a Quanaset style, and those are the ones that typically come in like a half round shape. They're actually supposed to be extremely strong, and that's why people like them, and they're a kit, and you can easily assemble them yourself. So that was kind of appealing to me. I, I didn't really, wasn't too fond of the round shape because I felt I was gonna lose a lot of uh, usable floor space with that. So that was one uh, drawback about that. And then the other reason why I ended up deciding not to go that route is because um, those buildings don't come with closed in end walls. So you have to either pay somebody to close in the end walls, you gotta buy all the roll up doors, install those, or you gotta do it yourself. And uh, I priced out doing that with those shops and uh, it ended up being basically exactly the same price as it would be for a steel building. The major difference is the steel building you don't have to, it's they come and assemble it for you. It's a huge time saving to have that done by somebody who does it every day rather than trying to figure it out on your own. So I decided not to go that route. The next type of steel building that I was considering because that a friend of mine here in town had one built about three, four years ago when I had originally started considering moving out here as well. Um, and that's one of the things why I got so frustrated on the price because I, he showed me the invoice of his his shop that he had built. He had a 30 by 45 with 12 foot walls. So a tiny bit smaller than the shop that I'm gonna get and a little bit taller. And the price for him, that building is fully insulated. Uh, the concrete was included in the price and the building was $26,000 for a building that's almost the size of the one that I'm gonna get built. So that's kind of what I was basing my decision off of when I was moving out here, you know? So I was like, well, I could easily do double that, you know, and it would be in my budget. But then when I started pricing things out for the exact same building that my friend had built for 26,000, the price, the lowest price I could find now is $57,000. And that, and that wasn't including electrical or any of that. So it was gonna be a little more than I was, quite a bit more than I was comfortable spending. So then I really started to wonder if this was gonna be possible because if I went any smaller than the size shop that my friend had, I didn't feel that I was really going to be able to build the lucky needle into what I want it to be and to be able to do the projects that, you know, one, you guys have been requesting and that I want to do. So then I moved on to another style of steel building. And essentially these are, these are engineered steel tube frames. So they're not the big heavy iron, uh, that uh, you may be thinking of when you think of a steel building. So the one that my friend had built and the one that I priced out, that was 57,000. Um, that's the style of building with the big I-beams on, um, on the whole frame, you know? So it, it looks to be super strong, but honestly, the, uh, the wind strength between those buildings and the, the tube steel, fabricated engineered tube steel buildings that I'm, and that's the building I ended up going with. Those buildings, the, the wind rating is essentially the same. They're not really that far off different wise. From the research I did, the main reason why you'd wanna go with what's called a red iron the, with the I-beams over the engineered steel uh, is because you can, if you ever want to, you know, have some sort of gantry crane or some sort of lift that's mounted on the ceiling to lift up and move things, then you're definitely going to need to go that route because the other types of buildings, the roof structure just isn't that strong enough. Uh, but that's not important to me. I don't ever plan on doing that. So, uh, so I ended up going with uh, one of these engineered steel buildings and um, so what I did was I started, when I was getting quotes for everything, I made this little spreadsheet. And um, if you take a look at my computer here, you could, I'll show you the spreadsheet where I got quotes from multiple different 
companies. Um, the, uh, the quotes that I even bothered to put down onto this spreadsheet were the ones that were realistically priced in my price range. I probably got quotes from 15 other companies and their prices were so high it wasn't even worth considering or putting on this spreadsheet. So I recommend, you know, definitely try getting quotes from different people because it's the, the price variance is, is uh, quite large. Uh, so that's what I did. And then I, uh, I landed on, on this company called Carport Commander. That's who I ended up going with in the end. Uh, because they had really good reviews and their salesman was really helpful in working with me uh, back and forth trying to figure out the size of the building that I wanted and all this and he didn't rush me and I just felt comfortable going with them and uh, I actually was able to negotiate a lower price on this building so the original prices that I was getting for this building was around a little over twenty thousand dollars is like twenty thousand five hundred dollars or something so what i did and if you guys know me or have seen you know some of my other videos i always try to negotiate for a better price so what i did was i went back and forth between a couple of these different manufacturers or steel building companies that i was thinking about using and i said okay well what's the price you can give me on this 30 by 40 shop with these doors, you know, X, I had already decided everything that I wanted in it. And, uh, and then they'd send me a quote and then I'd take whatever one was the lowest. And then I'd go back to the other two and say, well, this company said they can do it for this. Can you beat that price? So, um, in that process, I ended up actually getting the build, the cost of the building down to, uh, $18,000 even. So I saved about $2,500 on that just by doing that alone. So I highly recommend not being scared to, uh, to ask for a better deal, honestly, um, because you know, they, they, they have wiggle room, you know? So it, you never, they're never going to offer you a lower price if you don't ask. So just ask. I ended up going with Carport Commander because they seemed like a, a, you know, a, a reputable company that would be around for a while. Um, Oh, one of the other things I wanted to bring up that I also found out in my research and why I was comfortable uh, going to other, other companies and saying this company offered me this building for that price. And the reason is, is because uh, most of the steel buildings that are manufactured here in the United States come from two manufacturers. That's it. All of the other steel building companies purchase from those manufacturers. So I knew based off of the designs that they were giving me for the shops, they looked identical. And I knew that they were all coming from what the manufacturer is called Eagle Carports. Uh, they supply most of this side of the country. So I knew that the quality of the building wasn't going to change uh, between the companies. So it was just important to me to get a good price and somebody that I felt comfortable that was going to take care of me throughout this process. Um, because there is a lot of things that you have to do like with permits and if you, you know, I don't want to run into an issue where I can't insure this building uh, because I didn't go through the proper channels of getting a permit and, and doing all of that. So, uh, so that's really important and they actually help you with that process. They provide you with all the engineering and paperwork and they explained you know I, who I need to go talk to at the city and if I run into any trouble that they will they will get in contact with the city and help you know answer any questions that they're having so that's a big reason why I ended up going with a carport commander also as you can see if you stop notice on that spreadsheet I also had priced into their what I was reasonably expecting, you know, the concrete to be, the insulation to be, the electrical to be. Those are mostly educated guesses based off of some of the uh, contractors and people here in town that I've called to get kind of rough estimates. Uh, so I feel like I'll be sort of in the ballpark there. Um, I'm really hoping to get this, this building completely insulated, wired, 
uh, concrete, erected everything for somewhere around forty thousand dollars. Now that was, you know, a little bit more than I was anticipating to spend on a shop this size. But honestly, right now, that's just the way things are in the world, and I don't know if they're gonna get better. You know, so the price could easily go up higher. So I just need to do this now, and I'm moving forward and making the decision. So. For example, the, the insulation on the building, I decided since I'm going on a smaller building, I'm going to spend extra money on getting it insulated. So I'm most likely going to go with closed cell spray foam. And the reason for that is because if I, if I uh, insulate it with a high quality insulation like that, I'll be able to actually air condition a shop this size pretty reasonably. So I think that'll be worth the benefit for when I'm filming and stuff because I don't want to be sweating on the camera when I'm out here in the summer working, you know, and, and filming videos and stuff. So that was really important to me. Um, but yeah, if you take a look at my computer here, I can show you the, uh, the design of the building that I chose. I picked, uh, picked green for the walls and the roof, you know, to kind of match the Lucky Needle colors a little bit and then white on the trim and uh, white doors. So I think it's gonna look really good. I also chose it so that it kind of blends into the forest a little bit where I'm gonna put this shop. Uh, I don't want it to really be, an, one, an eyesore, and two, I don't want it to be so super visible from the main road, um, just for privacy reasons. So anyways, let's. Uh, I'll take you guys outside and I'll show you exactly where I'm gonna put this shop. And then I also wanna show you guys these two new tools that uh, I just bought for the tractor to help me uh, take down some of these, uh, take down the trees in the forest here and get the site prepped for, for building the shop. Because I did decide that I am gonna do that portion myself. I'm going to sub out the concrete work and the dirt work to somebody that actually knows what they're doing. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, cause you, when it comes to that stuff, it's really important that they build your foundation and your dirt in a way that um, in a way that water won't get inside because uh, you can really destroy everything. So th there's more than just going into it and putting down a concrete pad. You gotta have somebody that understands how water flows and how to create the proper irrigation so that the water goes around the building and not into it and ruining all of your hard earned equipment. So. Uh, so yeah, so let's go outside. I'll show you these cool new tools and, uh, and I'll show you where we're gonna put this shop. Oh, well, it looks like it's raining out here. I guess that's uh, a fun trait of Alabama. It rains all the time, but I don't mind it because we don't get fires here. So anyways, let's, uh, I'll walk you over here where we're going to, uh, where we're gonna, put the shop but I just remembered one thing I forgot the keys so let me just grab the keys really quick come on come on um so yeah the shop's just gonna go right on the other side of this existing shed that we already have here um I just the reason I decided that I want to put the shop here is because we already have a driveway right here um I could have put it on the other side of our property, but there's not really a reasonable way to, you know, back a trailer, get cars in and out of. So this is gonna be the most easily accessible from the road. It, it'll just be a short little drive down the driveway. All of these things, it's so much to think about. All the, you know, all of these things you gotta consider when you're, uh, when you're doing stuff like this, so. Uh, that's what I ended up deciding on. So if you walk over here, uh, essentially the building's probably going to start somewhere around where these two pine trees are. Um, the exact destination is probably going to change based off of when I get a concrete guy out here to give me an estimate, he's gonna have a better idea of where it'll be the least amount of work because it is on a slight slope so uh, if there's an area that's a little easier for them to build up the dirt and stuff that's what we're gonna do 
and that'll also help hopefully with pricing. Uh, but as you can see, the forest is pretty thick right now. So I decided I'm gonna clear this myself. And I mean, I have a chainsaw to do this and, and, and whatnot, but the tractor's really gonna come in handy because I'm gonna have to remove all of the stumps and everything because you can't just put a foundation right on top of old dead stumps. So uh, I just picked up this new tool for the tractor the other day. Uh, I got it used like I buy most of my stuff. <laughs> and uh, I got a really good deal on it. It's in the back of our moving truck here. Uh, all right. Good boy. Uh, so I got this uh, bush hog. It's used, but it's in very good condition. It's uh, it was only six hundred bucks. These these are like fifteen hundred dollars, brand new from John Deere. Uh, I also got it because it matches the color of my tractor. <laughs> uh, but anyways, what this is gonna do, this is like a big giant industrial mower and you can, from one of the research that I've done, you can mow over up to a two inch thick sapling with it. So that's really gonna help me get rid of all the underbrush uh, so that I can get to the trees that I need to cut down and then uh, get the whole area prepped. It'll save me a lot of time. That way I don't have to do all of that, you know, by hand with loppers and dig them out with a shovel and stuff like that. So. Uh, that's what we're gonna do there and then uh, so I'm really excited that's probably gonna be one of my projects today if this rain lets up is to get this out hook it up to the tractor and learn how to use it um, and you guys will see videos of that as I'm working on clearing this lot out so um, oh another thing too is the re one of the reasons I went with that carport commander company was because they uh, I told them that my site wasn't ready, you know, but I still wanted to lock in the price because the prices have been going up. So they they let me lock in the price. I put down the deposit. I think the deposit was like twenty five hundred dollars or something, and they're going to uh, honor that price up until six months from now. So I have six months to get this forest cleared and get the foundation built, which I feel is more than reasonable. So especially now that we're getting into the uh, fall so it's not as hot out anymore so I'll be able to get more work done um, but yeah and then let me go I'll take you into the shed and I'll show you the other tool that I got for the tractor all right so it's a little dark in here so I'm sorry if uh, it's hard to see but uh, I, re I recently bought this, uh, this is a stump grinder. So this attaches onto the back of the tractor and it has this huge flywheel with these giant carbide teeth on it and it just tears through some stumps. I've already removed a couple of them from the property. Um, you can get rid of a stump about this wide in diameter in probably 15 minutes with this. And honestly, like the reason I got the tractor and everything for these projects is because it just saves you so much time. Um, I did, when I first got here, I did uh, power through removing some stumps, digging them out with a shovel, and you know that'll that take it'll take about a whole day to remove a stump with a shovel and an axe, and it's a lot of work. And this does it in 15 minutes. So you'll definitely get to see some cool uh, cool videos of me using this guy. The reason I ended up actually deciding this was worth purchasing. I, I forget exactly how much it cost me. It was somewhere around $2,300, $2,500. When we, when we finish this project and I go through the cost breakdown of everything, I'll make sure to pull up the invoice so we can, but um, essentially I estimated that the area that I'm gonna have to clear is gonna be probably somewhere between 20 and 30 trees. So all of those stumps are gonna have to get removed. Um, in I know in my area, that stump removal is somewhere around $100 a stump. Uh, so by the end of this project, it will have already paid for itself and I'll own the, own the equipment. So I like to do that when I can. But yeah, I don't mean to uh, 
be turning this into a farm channel or anything. I just really got want you guys to see the whole process and everything that I'm going through to get this done. And, uh, and you know, maybe it'll help you guys in the future when you're building the shop too. So, uh, that's the goal. And I mean, plus tractors are just fun and cool. So, well, uh, thanks for coming along with me on this, uh, this day on this trip out into our yard and stuff. And, um, I'll keep filming these videos, updating you guys and showing you some, you know, clips and stuff of everything that I'm doing. I'm sure some of it's going to be pretty funny and might make, make some mistakes and whatever, but, but that's life. So anyways, I look forward to seeing you guys and, uh, getting to know you better on the forum and all that stuff. Uh, Oh, one other thing I wanted to, uh, point out that I got my Albrats t-shirt on today. Um, not not uh, trying to pressure anybody into using them. The, I just want you guys to know that uh, they're my personal favorite supplier that I use personally. Um, I, it's really really important to me that I don't ever that I don't ever support a company that I don't feel values their their integrity and their customers as much as I do. So. All of you guys that are watching this, all of you guys that have bought courses on the forum, it's really, really, really important to me that the Lucky Needle remains a trustworthy source. Um, and that's the reason why I've stopped endorsing companies in the past. That's the reason why I've turned down certain company sponsorships, um, just because either I they didn't treat me well as a customer or they didn't, uh, they didn't treat some of my customers well so um it's any company that i recommend i can promise you it's my honest opinion that they are good and worth it, worthwhile to shop at so that's the the only reason um you know it, it, it it's important for me to make money in this business obviously but i'm not going to do it at the cost of promoting somebody that i don't feel is going to take care of you guys so Albright Supply is my number one favorite because they are super helpful. Uh, they got free shipping and they're just, I've never ever had an issue with them. So I really enjoy working with them and I hope that uh, I want to make sure that you guys get somebody that you enjoy working with too. So anyways, going on a little too long here, but uh, just want to, uh, want to say thanks for watching and we'll see you guys soon. All right, if you like that video and you want to see another one, make sure you click to your right here. And don't forget about all the courses we have available at the Lucky Needle. Click here in the corner to get more information. And don't forget to subscribe right here.